you talk about creating a vision. You say the concept of a leader providing a vision to an organization they lead is at least 2,000 years old. In the King James Version of the Bible, Proverbs 29, 18 reads, where there is no vision, the people perish. At an early point in my experience leading people, I became aware that providing a vision of the future was one of the most important things a leader can do. The whole concept of leadership is about taking people to a place where they could not reach on their own. I have found that when I provide a vision of the future to a group I lead, it motivates and inspires them to work toward achieving a desired end state. That is why I believe creating a shared vision and communicating it consistently are important roles of a leader. Visualizing achievement is essential if you are to gain success. A vision must be a simple, unique, ideal image of the future. Ideally, the vision a leader develops should be a shared vision. A shared vision not only does not only mean everyone in the organization believes in the vision, but also that representa- representative members of the organization have provided input to create the vision. Occasionally I'll get, I, I talk about decentralized command all the time with all the companies I work with, and occasionally I'll get someone saying, hey, you know, I, I, I feel like the, the team doesn't really know where we're going and I'm trying to lead them in the right direction, but I don't want to impose it on them. And, and I, I say, listen, it is okay for a leader sometime to say, hey, everyone, this is where we're going. Because not everyone has the visibility that you have from your leadership perspective. You know, if you're in charge of a project, not everyone can see all the moving pieces, so they might not see, hey, this is where we need to go, this is what we're doing. Is it good to get input for that collective vision? Absolutely, absolutely. But you may be in a situation where other members of the team don't have the vision that you have because just because of where you're sitting or where you're standing, you can see a little bit more, you have a little bit more visibility on things, so sometimes you do have to make the vision. And as soon as you make that vision, your vision doesn't isn't uh, written in stone, or you shouldn't write your vision in stone. If you write your vision in stone, you're probably making a mistake. And some people might think that that sounds weak. Well, you know, are you gonna change your vision? Actually, I may change the vision if we get to a point where we need to do something, just like when you were in Ramadi, you say, hey, wait a second, we've been doing things like this, we are not getting any progress with the shakes, the shakes are telling us, oh, guess what we're gonna do? Adjust our vision. So there's nothing wrong with adjusting your vision and there's nothing wrong with if you're not getting feedback, it's okay, cool, watch this. Here's the vision, here's what we're gonna do. Start moving in that direction, adapt as needed. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, uh, totally agree. Uh, one, one thing I learned when, God, this is back uh, around late 90s, around the year 2000, was before 9-11, uh, when I took command of 55th Brigade uh, you know, National Guard Brigade, so, you know, about 3,000 soldiers distributed across northeastern Pennsylvania down toward the Philadelphia area. And, you know, 85% of them had full-time civilian jobs. So, like, man, i got to develop a vision for this organization in order for us to show some, you know, to, to move forward here. And what I did is uh, I went around uh, to representative uh, samplings of soldiers who were part of that brigade. I, I would talk to a PFC that had like a year in the army. You know, I would talk to a major who had you know maybe 16, 17 years in the army, and and every and a few folks in between there. I mean, three thousand soldiers. You can't talk to all of them and say, hey, where do you want to see this brigade go? <laughs> and and uh, the question I would ask them, I would say, hey, you know, if you fell asleep for five years and woke up five years from now, what would you want to see this brigade look like then? You know. And um, the funny thing is, whether it was a soldier, low rank, one year experience, or higher ranking officer with 17 years experience, everybody kind of wanted the same thing. They wanted to be well trained so if we had to deploy, we'd be able to do our job successfully. And that that ended up essentially what what the vision was. So what it taught me, uh, and this goes for any business leader out there trying to develop a vision for their organization, and, and many organizations are working distributed now, uh, you know, with the pandemic and everything else. It's try to get a, you know, when I say shared vision, try to get a representative sample, if you could, of where people would like to see it go. And ultimately, you as the leader, like you said, you, you've got a broader view of everything. So, yeah, it's, it, you're, you've finally got to put a stake in the ground and say, yeah, this is going to be our vision. But I think it's a good idea to get a representative uh, sampling of those in your organization. and uh, And then... You know, when you get it out there, 
you know, you, you, you've got to you've got to share it in a in a multitude of ways. You know, when you're speaking to people one on one, you've got to communicate that vision. When you're speaking to a group of 500, you've got to communicate the vision through email, through your website, through whatever you know social media means you you might uh, want to use. But the, the vision then has to be consistent. You know, it can't be a a new flavor of the month or a new vision of the quarter. You know, like you said, visions could change, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be changing on a very, very frequent basis. So that that's what I learned about developing a, a vision, you know, over twenty years ago. Yeah, and it's 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 always interesting, like that's alignment, right? No matter who you talk to, you talk to a frontline individual that's been in the army for six months, you talk to someone that's been in the army for twenty years, enlisted officer on both ends of that spectrum, and they all say, Oh, well, I'd like that if we get deployed, we're ready to do our job. Th- th- you can make so many decisions based on that, just knowing that right there. Hey, is it gonna help us do our job if we spend time you know, clowning around a- at work or on our drill weekend? Is it gonna help us be ready to do our job? No, it's not, so let's do something else. A- and that goes up and down the chain of command. And now that we have that shared aligned vision, now we can all make a bunch of decisions just based on the fact that we know that when we deploy, we wanna be ready to do our job, we wanna be effective, okay. Does this help us be effective or not? And we can make a decision. So that's important stuff.